when I first took this Diva Alphas SV TW out of the box, I was very very well impressed. For my taste, it looks more or less like a classy and expensive race car. Just look at all those sharp edges. For my taste, that's just very very cool looking real. And also no screws on the side plate. They are nicely concealed from, from this side. Looks very very nice and clean. And also wall color scheme looks quite fancy. Just black and silver. No crazy colors which I hate. But it's not only about the appearances or looks of the reel. It has plenty going on inside of the reel as well. For example it has quite fancy braking system then it has that fancy line management system which is called t-wing where the line guide goes up and down then it has carbon drag star and the reel itself is very very quiet and super smooth and towards the end of this video i will install a drag clicker into this reel to make it perfect for my needs so i hope this video will be useful for you guys please make sure you stick around start this video by explaining why I obtained this Diva reel. Basically I'm looking to replace my Shimano Curado BFS even though this reel has one good advantage which is casting performance. It casts well but that's about it. I hate the drag performance. I hate how the power transmission is as well. So this Diva will be much better in those respects. I believe that Shimano still would outcast that uh, Diva, let's say, with 5 grams or less, but not by much. And I much prefer to have, you know, smooth and smooth reel and one which has better drag performance. For me, those are much more important features than, you know, 5% further casts. So, yeah, I'm looking to replace that Shimano. Curado BFS and I believe I will not put uh, or load the line right to the rim. I will, you know, underload the spool because the spool is relatively light but it's deep. So if I would put a lot of line in here, it would get heavy. And if I want to get maximum performance, I will not, you know, load the reel, as they say, up to the rim. So then it will cast perfectly. So yeah, that's the reason why I obtained the reel. Alright, let's have a closer look at the reel itself. As you can see, this thing is tiny. I can pretty much hide it in my palms quite easy. Even though the Shimano Curado is so similar sort of size, just I would say that Shimano Curado is, is probably almost a centimeter wider, more or less. Or at least it looks like that. So the thing is, as I say, very, very tiny and the box itself, I mean, that's a tiny little box. So it has, I believe, 80 or 8 centimeters handle. Let's quickly measure it. I know, 8.5. So and now let's talk about the moving parts. First of all, the handle itself, as you can see, it's kind of nicely bent to make the reel more compact, which is very good to see. And the handle itself, from what I can tell, it's kind of made out of some painted aluminum, I guess. The knobs are soft, like a rubberized material, and the movement in the knobs is very, very minimal. In both of them so yeah that's acceptable not bad actually then actually no movement like in and out very good to see then 
there is a little bit of like you know movement of the handle but uh, under high pressure like when you will be fishing you won't feel that again that's good to see and the power transmission is really really good on this reel for example see I can make the reel turn just by kinda twisting the bolt in here that's very very good and it's quiet as well then we have a drag star uh, it's made out of carbon or Zion as Daiva calls it and it has a clicker installed which sounds quite nice to, for my taste Uh, drag itself does not have a clicker as you can see I'm holding the spool and the reel remains silent which sucks but again uh, you can install you know a drag clicker which are quite cheap these days and it's easier to do as well I will show you in a bit then spool tension knob this one is kind of well concealed and it does not it does not click I'm actually touching the the drag star whilst twisting this adjuster but as you can see it does not click but it's very very well concealed I mean by accident to kind of turn it it's almost impossible it's not only well concealed but it has some uh, resistance you know so to turn it by accident it's almost impossible which is good to see then we have a moving part extra moving part or I mean most of our reels will not have that and that's a teething system basically what it does when you want to cast that teething will go down and will expose wider bit of that system for the line to go you know at not a steep angle angles if you like and then the casting kind of smoothness and distance should be improved a little bit not a lot but a little bit and then when you reel in that TV goes up and then you are left uh, you are left up with a, with a kind of tiny groove for the line lay to be perfect I mean from the side to the side of the spool so yeah nice little system then let's move here we have a braking adjuster or braking system adjuster so this one is kind of very interesting I have like a, a doubts about this one basically it's quite well exposed and it's possible to to turn it by accident you know like whilst you will be fishing but again this one is very very loud most likely if you will kind of adjust the braking system by accident you will know about it because you will hear because it's very very loud see and when you want to adjust it it's very easy you can do it with one thing you know so again good and bad things about this little idea it's good that it's loud but it's not so good that you can you know adjust it when you don't want to but again when this reel will be on the rod most likely you won't even adjust it by accident so maybe it's not bad I uh, will have to see how it will perform on the water so those are the main moving parts and I have to say I'm quite happy with how it looks like now if I will remove the side plate I have to say that to remove the side plate it's quite difficult you kind of flip the switch which is easy but then you need to kind of quite a bit of energy to almost put your nail in between the side plate and the frame to get the side plate you know out of the way so yeah this is the side plate and this is that fancy SV spool where the inductor I guess it's called goes closer to the braking hub or and then it's kind of pulled back by some spring 
I will show you in a minute that this system actually works and you can tell that it works. Uh, but again, just wait a couple of minutes, I will show you what I mean. So yeah, and this SV system means that kind of if I will hold the inductor, I can turn the spool, I don't know, probably 30 degrees or 45 degrees, but then it kind of stops. Now let's quickly weigh the spool. If I remember correctly, it weighs about 12 grams, which is very, very good. And it should cast like four gram lure, I believe, if the spool won't be filled, you know, fully. Yeah, as you can see, 12, 21. So yeah, definitely very, very good for a reel, which is, I believe, classed or rated for casting weights from five to 20 grams. This pool is very, very light for that. So very good to see. But again, there are some uh, aftermarket spools already and you can turn this reel in, into a proper BFS, which will be casting, you know, two grams with, you know, not uh, a lot of effort at all. Okay, I will put that spool back now. And whilst I do that, I will explain or tell you that the frame of the reel is made out of metal, some kind of aluminum, and also the side plate, this one, is made out of aluminum as well, or some metal, which is very, very good to see, you know. You're almost getting, even though it's light reel, about 175 grams, but you are getting almost metal reel, except the side plate, which is made out of plastic or something like that but still you are getting like most of the outsides of the reel which are made out of metal very very good okay now a little bit about this moving part and that's a spool releaser if you like knob so basically this one is nice and tight in this position really nice and tight and then when you go down it has a little bit of movement but not a lot really like if i will shake it it will not move so it's it has enough tension as well and the knob itself it's kind of made out of plastic i guess shiny plastic not sure why they did that probably to match with the t-wing which is shiny it has no like uh, texture on the on the knob itself so but don't think that it will be slippery but it might be i have no idea because i just obtained this reel and haven't fished with it yet but never heard that people would complain about this one being slippery and it works fine now about that fancy braking system, basically I can show you that it works and you will hear about it. As you can see, this is my microphone pointing directly into the camera. Even so you won't be able to hear me that well, but you will be able to hear the reels kind of gears much better. So now I will show you that the braking system installed on this reel works as advertised. Basically they are saying that the inductor will come out on those aggressive and jerky casts and I can actually prove that it actually does come out so if I will adjust my drag to zero now and will give the spool a spin you won't hear anything pretty much or any extra sounds but then if I will adjust the drag to maximum, you will hear an extra click, which means when the inductor comes back or is being pulled back by that spring, listen for it. See, and also I can achieve that just by turning the reel uh, aggressively at the start.
and it won't be happening if I will adjust my drags to minimum. So yeah, the braking system definitely works as advertised and the braking system is kind of very very good when it comes to performance. Uh, now I am on minimum braking and as you can see the spool is very light and very quiet. But then if I will go to maximum drag power, the spool barely spins and still you can hear that and doctor going in and out. So yeah, all in all, this reel is almost perfect for my taste and again, no complaints almost at all except that it does not have a drag clicker. Come on Daiva, it's easy to install and yeah, let's just go for it. I, I obtained this set from AliExpress for, I don't know, 10 pounds. It will be like 12 uh, euros or 15 dollars, not too sure, but check it out. It's quality kit and it will work for this reel, I'm certain. So yeah, let's go and install this drag clicker. For that I will remove side plate, remove the spool as well if I can. Here we are. So as you can see it will need those keys or Allen keys they are called with uh, six kind of or six star if you like. It's not even a star but you will need something like that. In general, in English they are called Allen keys, not, not sure why they are called like that, but they are called like that. So, let's begin by removing the handle itself. I will use a very big screwdriver, just to make sure that I have enough, you know, power to do it easy. Here we are. As you can see, even the screw is black. <laughs> Diver really put some thoughts into the design. Okay, now I will grab a very big wrench. Have not to forget that now I want to unscrew, but I have to go to the opposite direction. Here we are, nice and easy. Be careful uh, if you will be doing yourself this little procedure because a drag star is spring loaded. Ooh, just look at all that grease. Wow, very good to see that. Well done, Diva. Always good to see plenty of grease uh, in the reel. Okay, I have to unscrew this one now. It's taking some time. I hope it's a good television for you guys. <laughs> Whilst I am undoing this plastic bit. Okay. Okay, there is a very thin washer. We'll make sure that I will keep, you know, everything in little groups. Like if I and I take apart a node if you like, so I like to keep everything, you know, in separate kind of pile of uh, elements which were used in for that node if you like. Okay, now I can grab that Allen key and start removing those screws and also it's only three of them usually on other bait casters you'll find, you know, four And I quite like, you know, that they went with Allen uh, screws because, you know, they are much easier to work with. There is another one. Let's 
the third one for the third one you have to go through this little hole in the frame nice and easy really really like this design where the screws are you know concealed you might say that they will be harder to get out but again <laughs> not every day you will be getting out those screws here we have the side plate moving be careful okay Okay, let's put that side plate in here. Let's see about the grease. Oh yeah, the, I can feel that the main gears are well greased, guys. Very good to see from Diva, yeah. Oh wow, that's, that's a big fat ass washer this one is. And you know what? I'm certain that this main gear could take uh, like a original drag clicker because it has like a groove in here by the side and the washer is kind of thick so I am sure that from over reels from diver reels I mean it could take a original drag clicker so yeah okay let's take this thing off wow very simple design just one fat I guess aluminium washer and a carbon washer underneath that's awesome really really good design no messing about no like hundreds of you know of not hundreds but five or six extra washers you know very simple and clean design love it okay now all i will do i will kind of clean this little area with a ear cleaner i guess you can use like a, you know, paper towel or I don't know, any other clothes just to clean it. You can use some acetone if you want as well, just to clean it as much as you can. But for this demonstration, I just, uh, I just will clean it, you know, with, with this uh, dry little thingy and it should work. Okay, now I'll grab that drag clicker set and the procedure will be quite simple one so this one goes first and if you will buy the set make sure that you remove a clear film I removed it before but when it will come you know from the store it will have a clear film you have to remove it so once you remove it you just put that gear just like that then on goes carbon washer and now you can actually you can go or have your drag in two ways you can go with this one first and that's probably recommended way and then you go with this one having this way you will have a little bit better and louder drag but if you want to have a little bit you know not as loud drag you can you can actually flip flip those two you can go with this one first and this one afterwards on top but again uh, this will make the drag sound a little bit weaker and the drag will be just a little bit weaker as well so it's up to you but I would advise probably to use this technique where you put this bit which will actually will make the sound when it will going through the teeth first and then go with this one on top and if you want to reduce sound with this setup you can bend those little wings if you like kinda I will show you so see this bit this is the one which makes all the noise so you can kind of bend it out a little bit and then it won't be as loud but yeah for now i just will leave it as is so 
and I should be able to test maybe if it works already. Yep. And I just know that, you know, uh, on the water and with the side plate on, it won't be as loud. On the water, actually, it will sound perfect. For example, on Curado, one of the things which I don't like because the <laughs> drag clicker is not as loud. You almost can't hear it on windy days. But I'm certain that I will be able to hear this one perfectly. Yeah, okay. So let's put everything back, uh, let's put everything back together to see how it will work. Oh, also, I will check one more thing. This plastic bit, see? I wonder how it moves. Can it be used to kind of serve as a reel? Uh, probably not so much. I mean, can it be used to serve as a reel without taking the reel apart? But probably not so much. It kind of clips on those two little uh, clips and now even with the reel open I'm struggling to put it on so yeah this bit is kind of decorative only to save the uh, weight I guess right I will put this bit and align it right away then I will align not only the main shaft but also this little black rod for the for the spool tension adjuster. Okay, this ball bearing really don't want does not want to stay in for some reason. It goes out, but it must be in just like that. Perfect. Okay, I think everything is in place. Now I can. I don't know, put one screw and see if it will work, you know? Before putting the rest of the screws in. Okay. Now let's put that handle on just, you know, to check that the, that the drag is working as it should. Plenty of washers here. I'm not sure if so many of them are needed in here, but let's say they are. Now goes that spring like that. Okay, now I'll have to line the drag star. Probably I have to screw that a little bit more. Perfect. Yeah, now it should work. Let's put that handle back on. Got a washer here. Come on. Yep. Handles back on. Let's secure it in place, opposite direction, need to align it a little bit better. This little uh, screw is a little bit better, I would say, most of the time on other reels they are made out of aluminum and they are very soft you know just to reduce the weight I guess 
I think I got it aligned now. Yeah, I did. Okay. Let's put that spool back in and let's, you know, see if if drag liquor is kicking about. Also, when closing the side plate, just I would advise, you know, to make sure that, you know, it's really nice and tight and snug and then flip the switch. Okay, the reel is still working. Okay, let's grab the spool. Perfect. Yeah, and I can tell that. Yeah, the adjuster is working as well. Perfect. So yeah, we installed a drag clicker in a couple of minutes. But that's a bit from me for today. I hope you'll find this video useful. Also, just a quick reminder, if you will decide to grab that drag clicker, which you saw works perfectly for this reel, please check that link in the description. But that's it. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.